Hello everybody, my name is Matthias and I am the owner and creator of the Ninja RPG, which is an online game uh, that has existed for almost 20 years now and we are currently developing the fourth iteration of the game, otherwise known as Core 4. And in this series of videos, I will be showing you guys how I am developing the game. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to learn something from it. And I imagine the format will be that I don't prepare anything, but just code as I usually do. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to, to pick something up or learn something from these videos. So let me know what you think. And today we will do a quite simple feature. Uh, so basically, a few days ago we implemented a mission system. So we go to the village and we go to the mission hall. Uh, you can see here we have a ranks, D ranks, C ranks, and so forth. And the idea is that we want to implement a delay timer so that once you've completed an errand, you have to wait one minute before you can start the next one. If you've completed a D rank, you have to wait five minutes and so forth. So we need to implement this type of a delay feature. I think before we start coding, uh, we should maybe make an errand right now. This is a local version of the game. There are no errands, so if we go to quests and we go create a new one, we want to make a new errand type quest. Uh, and we ask ChatGPT to help us create a pick up groceries across town. Make an errand type quest for picking up groceries across town. So we just use ChatGPT to help create the descriptions and stuff like this. And it's trying to insert an objective that was not understood. That's fine. We don't need that for now. Then we need to create an image for it. Let's see if, uh, if that goes well. Grocery run, local elderly resident needs someone to pick up groceries. It's fine. All good. That's a decent image as well. Save the database. So now we've made a new errand. Doesn't have any objectives, but for the feature we're doing right now, that's fine. So we go back to mission hall and refresh. And we see now we have D rank and so forth. So if we go to the code, I think the first thing we need to add is some timestamp for when we completed our last mission. So if we go to our schema uh, and we need to go to the user data model, <coughs> this is the data model that contains all the user data and we will want to add another timer field. Similarly to the updated ad, we have one here. We call it quest finish. It's a good name. Um, bop, bop, bop. I think that's fine. And we put the default timestamp. So when a new user is created, it just defaults to the current timestamp. So when you just register, you have to wait a few minutes before you can finish errands. But I think that's fine. Um, and then for now, we just push this to the database. So we do make db push. That will push the changes to our development database. Uh, and let's not make the migration file yet in case we need to add more things to the database. So this one is done. Um, what we then need to do is... Uh, let's, let's start with updating that field. So whenever a user finishes a quest, it should update that field. Um, and the place where we finish quests is inside our router. And then I think we have a method called check rewards. So this endpoint essentially checks for a given quest whether it was finished and if it was finished it gives the rewards and stuff to the user and uh, let's see let's see let's see let's see where do we put this stuff i think basically when 
have to make sure I don't do anything dumb, but I'm pretty sure once we update the user data here, we should update this new field we just made. Quest finish at. Uh, that's just new date. So now whenever a user finishes a quest, this new field is set to that given timestamp. Um, we also need when the user abandons a quest, that field should also be updated. Um, so that's in this endpoint where we have abandoned a given quest. Uh, and right now, once a user, when a user abandons a quest, it just updates the quest history. So here we need to run two queries. Uh, so we can do them in parallel. We do a promise to all, which takes a list of the first one, the one we did before. And then we need a new one that goes CTX so update let's see if it does it right here copilot is a nice thing it updates the user data sets the quest finish at user data user id that looks right so now this field in our database is updated whenever a user finishes a quest or whenever a user abandons a quest so this is good um what's the next Thing we should do i think let's start with implementing the backend logic here uh, so basically when a user wants to start a random quest it runs the start random uh, and right now we do a few checks to see um, we do a few checks to see if the user is allowed to perform the given type of mission or quest and so forth but maybe this is not the right place to start uh, because we need we need to pick up the given delay for a given mission so we need kind of a setting for how long should we wait after an errand how long should we wait after a d rank and i am thinking we might have to go to our mission hall so this is the front end component where we have the settings for the six options you see here and I think it would be a good idea for us to move this settings thing out. So if we move it to our lips here instead, so we don't have it in the front end component, and we call it mission hall settings instead. And then in the mission hall, we will import it here, import mission hall settings. From um, no lips quest, and, and then we remove that from here. So, this is basically just a little bit of a refactor. I have a tendency to do that as I'm coding to kind of hopefully keep improving the code base as we go. This all cleared out. Okay, and then my thinking is now we have all the settings in here that we, in here, we will add uh, this delay, basically. So let's say after an errand, delay minutes one, indicating that there is one minute you have to wait after completing an errand. Uh, and for missions, let's do five so you have to wait five minutes after each mission maybe it makes sense also just for the visuals that the, the higher missions you wait longer so let's do 5 10 15 20 and 25 minutes you have to wait before you can complete the next s rank <clears throat> i think that's fair missions should be somewhat complicated to do especially s ranks so it shouldn't be something you just grind it needs to be should be something you you think about so now we have this definition of how many minutes and we can go back to the back end so what we wanted to do here was basically the, the server logic of when a user tries to uh, start a new mission it needs to check whether that user is allowed to do so based on how long it's been since the user did it last um, so what do we do here first we need to import our mission hall settings let's go to quests we import our settings in here 
and then we go to start random again uh, and we're already doing a few checks let's just add uh, let's add it up here so fetch settings first we need to see if we can find the settings uh, for this given type so the input for start random is whether it's an errand or a mission and what rank it is. So we get either errand or mission and we get DCBAS. So first we get the setting, we go for mission hall, find tuk tuk, let's just call S and we go S. Type equals to input type and S rank equal to input. So this will either be defined or undefined. Uh, if it's not found, we will throw an error. Settings not found. Yeah, that, that's a decent message. Um, and now we have the settings for whatever the user is requesting to do. Then we need to figure out how many minutes passed. Confirm timing. has been long enough since last quest. Uh, so we need to calculate how many minutes passed since the user last did a quest. Uh, and we have some time utilities here. We actually have one called seconds passed, so we'll just import that one. Or mm, seconds passed from utils time. Uh, Start random yes. And then we'll try to define that as minutes past. Should be a good name. Uh, and exactly like that. Then we get how many seconds have passed since the given timestamp in quest finish at. And we divide that by 60, then we have it in minutes. And now we should be able to do our test quite easily. We do minutes passed if that is lower than the settings, not cool, or what do we call it? Delay minutes. If it's less than that, then we need to throw the error in. Yeah. Must wait, delay minutes. Yep, yeah, Copilot is doing a great job finishing things for us. And that's basically the backend part, I think. Let me just consider this a little bit. I think so. I think we're all done on the backend now. So let's go to the mission hall, the front end component. This data here was not being used. Let's remove that. Cleaning up the code as we go along. Okay, so basically we have those mission hall settings and what is happening in this code is we're mapping over it. So for each one of them, we we output uh, an image like this um, and now i think we need to do a few more checks in here so let's add a few comments uh, count how many of this type and rank are available so that's basically the count we're showing down here and then what do we need to do now we need to create a, a countdown component uh, and since each of these missions and errands have a different time. We will need to create a countdown for each one of them. Yeah. All right. So create, what do we call it? Based on last quest finish, create countdown if applicable. Okay. So what do we need to do? We need to figure out for this given quest, when will we be allowed to do it based on when we last did a quest. So we do const allowed at. So here we need a date, date time for when we're allowed to do this specific type. Um, and if we go to our time utilities, I think we have one called seconds from date is that this one it goes a given date and then adds a number of seconds and returns a date that is exactly what we want so we go seconds from date 
And then we have the setting delay minutes times 60. So we we have delay minutes times 60. That's the number of seconds that we want to add to whatever date when the user last finished the quest. And we need to, of course, to import this one. Import this from Utils time. Mm, what's the deal here? User data. I think it just did a, a random uh, name for the field. What? Ah, yeah, that's this works, and this should be a date. Allow that date. Perfect. Now we know when it is allowed, then we can create a countdown component, and we have already implemented that countdown. This component. Let's see where we're using it. Apparently, I've searched that recently. Let's just copy it here. I think it's usually easier to copy. Uh, oh, we used it previously. Okay, so let's do const uh, count down component equals to this. And the target date is now allowed. That. So this will count down to allow that. We need to import it, of course. Um, Down. All right, countdown components fine. Mm -hmm. But for the ones where it's already completed, we don't want to show it. So how do we do that? Let's do a const. I think probably it's best to do it like this. So if allowed at it's over a uh, new date, then we show the loaded demo show it otherwise not. Yeah. So now this one, the timer will be our countdown component if the allowed as is in the future, otherwise it will show null. Here we have an issue which is a little bit interesting because the front end and back end might be out of sync. Um, so previously I've implemented into the use required user data hook that we also get a time diff, which is the difference between the front end and the backend or the server, so to speak. Uh, and we can use this to get a synced timestamp from the backend. Um, this is a little bit of an annoying feature, but it has to be done. Otherwise, things get out of sync and are super annoying. So timestamp synced with the server. Current timestamp. So comes now, and then what we do here is get a new date of, and I remember that basically we have to get the current timestamp on the front end, then we uh, subtract the time diff, and we create a new date object out of that. So now we have a date object which corresponds to the server time basically. Uh, and instead of using just the front end time, we should use the server time here. So whatever we show on the front end actually reflects the server state and not the front end. Uh, what is going on here? Can I read properties of. Oh, interesting. Target. Get date, get time. <laughs> seems like it's not getting this date. I think this might be because I have to restart the container. Usually it does something. I don't know exactly how Drizzle, which is the ORM. Uh, sometimes you have to restart the container to get those types working properly. So let's try that. Now I've rebooted the container. We go to back to the mission page. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah, that was just it. I had to restart the container. Annoying. Okay, now we have our timer component, then we should show it somehow. And let's think about this. I think this 
where we show there's one available if it is a if the timer has passed we would want to show that but otherwise we would uh, show the countdown so let's do it here instead where we do timer is set then it's just the timer and otherwise we just showed this string so now it should show the countdown if the timer is defined otherwise it shows uh, how many are available so let's test it out we accept an errand and since there wasn't any objectives we can just collect the reward which was also non-existent and we see all the timers that's perfect very good uh, i think when the timer has not expired uh, we should gray out things as well so let's see where do we gray out this here so we do if the count is zero we gray it out we could also do if the timer is not null so if we have a countdown we also gray it out that should be fine and if we try to do this one it should give us an error must wait one minute that's what we implemented on the back end so this is this is good uh, and then when this runs out what will happen i think actually right now the timer will just say done and nothing will happen and it won't re-render this component at all let's see what happens here yeah just as done so this this should basically re-render the mission hall component so that this would get highlighted and and you could see it uh, i don't know the best way to do that but one way is to just update some random state on this component whenever the timer is finished and then it would re-render so uh, let's do use state from react react uh, we implement a counter uh, no counter set counter I don't know where I got this comment, if, if that's from my code, or this is just a common way to do it. But uh, I don't think we need that. Maybe it's fine to have that comment in there. Uh, the counter itself we won't use, we just want to update some state so that it refreshes this entire uh, page. Yeah, and what we do, I think on the countdown, we have an unfinish, yeah. So on this one we say unfinish. Finish, we set counter in, in plus one. So basically, when the countdown is finished, it updates a state on this component, which will force a re render, uh, which should be good. I don't want to wait two minutes and 35 seconds, so let's just accept an errand, let's try abandoning it, and we also verify the, the time timer thing was updated so now it's 54 seconds and then we just have to wait 50 seconds see if, if this one updates and then everything refreshes so that's perfect while we do that i think right now i'm pretty sure i'm a student or whatever but i shouldn't be able to see the c ranks as i could previously so while we wait we could implement here that we check uh, whether i'm which so if I'm a student, I'm only allowed to do D rank or whatever. Uh, I think we have that in train in the lips. We have this that says if you're a student, you get to do D rank, if gen in, D and C and so forth. So this one we should implement on the mission hall. Um, oh. no. Lips train. I think we need it. And this actually worked. So if you saw over here, when the timer finished, it, uh, it removed the timer, put in this one, and it put back the colors. Uh, so, so that part works now. The last thing we want to do is just uh, make sure that I cannot see the C rank. Um, so what we do is available ranks. Uh, once we're here, We'll just calculate what ranks are available to this user. So we go get available uh, ranks for a user. Available. 
avail all ranks and we got user data rank which is the student gen and so forth global ranks didn't i just import this i probably can't call it the same let's just call it ranks user rank user available available user ranks there we go okay and then we need to check whether the user whether the given uh shown quest is within what the user is allowed to do uh, let's see check if user rank is high enough what is quest Count is rank allowed let's see available user rank includes setting rank perfect and if not then now let's just visualize uh, the issue here actually just get this one so now i will update my user Mm, it's called localhost. We'll update him to basically. I'm just going into the database directly to uh, to change when I did my last mission. So now I should be able to do all of them if I refresh here. Yep. And if we now implement this, is rank allowed? or uh, should gray out the c rank perfect okay did we forget anything i think i think this is uh, what we needed to implement so feature done uh, hope this was interesting and uh, i just need to push this now and then it should be live in one to three minutes